Hello my friends, today we're back in Luminar Neo and we will be talking about the new software release. This is Luminar Neo version 1.2.0. We'll see what is new and how to use the new tools. But before you run on your computer and um, you know start looking for the software update, just let me tell you this update is not going to be available until Thursday, July 28th. So I have a pre-release version and I am going to show you what's new. The first thing it's new, when you open your Luminar Neo, you will see right here next to Luminar Neo, you have this puzzle sign. And if you click on it, then you have the ability to add an extension and that is HDR Merge. As you can see, I already have it installed. So that is the first option, the first uh, new thing. And then the second new thing is when you go to edit into the tools all the way to the bottom, now we have dodge and burn and I will show you how to work with that as well. So let's focus on this HDR merge. What is HDR stands for? For those of you who are not familiar with HDR, HDR stands for high dynamic range and it's best used when your dynamic range in your image, it's greater than what your camera can record. And in that uh, situation, you will want to bracket your exposure. So you will take three exposures to all three different exposures. One is a normal exposure, one is darker and one is lighter. You can take as many as you want. The Luminar Neo HDR supports up to 10 images. I find the three is plenty and I don't have a really wonderful example here. I have this one here, but we will see how it works. And to create an HDR, you have to select all three images. Once you select all three exposures, you just want to drag them into this uh, dialog over here. And now we have a few settings. If you go over here to the gear, you can have auto alignment, which I would recommend to keep it on just in case you accidentally bump the tripod or there's any kind of movement. And then ghost reduction. This uh, you can use when you have moving objects like people, cars, etc. And I would recommend not even trying on doing HDR when you have moving subjects because you would get to some, you know, bad ghosting and, you know, artifacts. So auto align and then all we need to do get out of this dialog and just click on merge and now luminar neo it is going to do its magic and merge these three images into one image that it has all that dynamic range and then we will be able to edit that image from there so let's see what it comes up with and there is our HDR merge image. It took about a minute and that might be because I have really high resolution images. I took this with my Sony 7R4. So that's like 61 megapixel per image. Now let's edit this image, see if we can make anything out of it. Right now it looks pretty disgusting. It's also a little bit blurry. I don't think it finished loading. I will start with the develop. And the first thing I want to do, this image is very, very overexposed. So I will bring the exposure down quite a bit, maybe to negative 1.14. I will add a little bit of contrast, not too much because I will add more later. So just 20 to smart contrast. I will bring down the highlights, not too much, negative 22. And I'll open out the shadows quite a bit to maybe plus 76. And that is looking all right, but the colors are not good. And let's see, I will also add an enhance, not too much, maybe just around 15, 14, that is good. And then this blue is really, really saturated. And this is why HDRs have a really bad reputation because people that are new to HDR, they are, you know, blending this photos and end up with crazy looking colors. Everything is super saturated and cartoonish looking. So we have to go into color, go into the HSL, into saturation. And here I'll take the blues down to negative 32, but I will increase the oranges to maybe 25, 26, something like that. Now I also want to color tone this image. So I will go to toning and amount i'll keep it at a hundred percent highlights will work with highlights first i'll increase the saturation to 100 percent so i can see which color am i working with and i want to choose something in the 40s range that's where our warm tones are 42 that looks good to me and then down the saturation to around 40 
41, 42, that looks good. Next, we move to shadows, and here with the mount still at 100%, saturation at 100%, I want to move into the blue tones, and those are around 220. So let's see. 213, that should work. And then uh, take down the saturation to, let's see, 27, 28. And this is our toning. This is the before and this is the after. Now, let's see. The blues are still maybe a little bit too much. So I'll go back into color. Where is my color? Over here. And into the saturation, take the blues even down a little bit. And then I also want to add a vignette. So I'll go to vignette, take the amount to negative 100. You can choose the subject if you want and place it in the middle. So then I'll take the size down as well. The roundness, I do like it oval, it kind of the shape of my island. So maybe a little bit more round, something like that. Feather, I would like to feather it to 100%. Inner light, add just a tiny little bit, not too much. And then adjust to amount to something that looks good. Let's see, maybe something like that. And this is our before and after the vignette, before and after. I can even add a little bit more vignette. And now the last thing I want to do, I want to add a lot more contrast because our image is still looking, you know, not so exciting. So I want to develop a module. I want to add an S curve to add more contrast. And you see what is happening. We end up with those nasty colors again when we do this because every time we adjust contrast, exposure, shadows, black, whites, it does mess with the colors as well. So I am going to show you the best way to add contrast without messing with the colors. So I will reset this, click on the reset button, and I will go here onto my layers and just click D on my keyboard to duplicate that layer. Great, now with our duplicated layer selected, make sure you're on the duplicated layer selected. I will go into develop and I will add my contrast, my S curve. And you might say, Skylar, this looks just as bad as the other one looked. And that is correct, but I'll show you how to fix it. So here's, maybe I'll even leave the shadows a little bit so we don't have pure blacks. And now we have beautiful contrast, but not so beautiful colors. And the way to fix this is to go to layer properties and then go into the blending mode and choose luminosity. And what that will do, it will only keep the contrast and not affect the colors. So if you see this, how can I, let's see here. If I hide this layer, we had that, and now we added this contrast. And now our image even looks a little bit more dull. So maybe we want to add a little bit of color to it. So go back to the original layer and to develop and maybe just add a little bit of vibrance. And it's not in develop, it's in color. And here add some vibrance to the whole image. Do not overdo it. Keep it natural looking. There you go. So let's see where we started with. This is our image before, and this is after, before and after, and I think this is a way better result. The horizon is crooked, so let's see, we need to fix that. I never liked the way the, the straightening, the crop tool works in Luminar Neon, but let's see, something like that. That looks better and just click enter to accept the change. And there is our edited image. And that was HDR merge. And really, really quickly, I will show you the dodge and burn. I almost forgot about that. Let's go to all photos and I will choose this image. And you will find dodge and burn that I show you before. Is it into port, not portrait, it is into professional tab over here. And this is dodge and burn. And basically when you dodge and burn an image, you want to darken that already darkened uh, parts, which is the shadows, and you want to brighten the highlights. Here you have the amount slider that uh, does the overall amount. And then you have the brush controls. You can lighten, darken, or erase. You have the size, the softness, and the strength. 
So for example, let's say we want to darken this part over here. We will go to darker, the size will need to go a little bit bigger. I'll keep my brush pretty soft. And let's see, we are darkening. And I have a lot of strength over here. You might want to go a lot lower, or you can go with a high strength like this and then just take down the amount and make it work for you. So this is our before and after so far, before and after. And then let's say we want to also darken these lines over here to emphasize it. I would close Dutch and Burn, open it again, go back to darkened. And this time we'll work with these lines and that will emphasize that. Take your time, make your brush smaller, bigger, whatever you need to do. So that is that, and then I would take the amount to something that looks right, something like that. And let's see, we want to darken these two on the edges. I will close that and burn and open it again. And I like to work with them independently because then if I change my mind or I just want to change the values, oops, I'm on lighten, so I will erase what I did. I could just reset it. But um, the reason I like to do them separately is because I can adjust them later and, you know, or delete and just restart. And I don't have to do the whole image all over again. So I'll go to darken. I'll make my brush bigger. And I'll just quickly darken that and maybe this one. Just like that. And then decrease the amount to something that looks right. And now let's say we want to brighten the center parts. And we would go to lighten and just the same way we did with darken you will go in and adjust those brightest areas and let's see this is the before and after let's see the whole image so far this is the before and after before and after I will make a more in-detailed um, video about Dodge and Burn, how to do it on a portrait, because I think that's a little bit more complicated and not a lot of people know how to do that. For landscapes, you pretty much that's the rule. You want to darken the parts that already are in the shadows and lighten the already light parts. And that is what is new in the newest update. As I said, this new update will come out on Thursday the 28th. And um, I hope this was helpful. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Skylar Ewing, and I will see you in my next video.